more NXT cuts. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but uh, I was kind of surprised. I was like, wow, more cuts again. And uh, the names, a couple of people who I think are, are going to find some work, hopefully uh, on the other side. But uh, what did you think about the names? That, what is it? Ten names listed today? There were 10, and there's there's people in the company who think that that's not it. I mean, in the sense of, um, you know, I've heard rumblings about more, but who knows? You know, who knows? I mean, these were pretty much – some of these, you know, obviously were blindsided because you can just watch the TV and see, you know, Dexter Loomis and Persia Parada. Yeah. And um, who was the other one? Uh, you know, Malcolm Bivens. They all had storylines that were ongoing. And then they were cut. So the people, I mean, even the people involved in NXT creative, you know, I mean, this tells you, you know, either it's a communication issue because, uh, you know, if these people were going to get cut, you know, you would probably want to not start storylines with them as they have done with Malcolm Bivens in particular. But, um, yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, obviously they did know about uh, Parker Boudreaux, you know, Harlan, because he was taken away from Joe Gacy two weeks ago. So clearly they knew about him. But the other ones, obviously, they did not know about. So, um, you know, that's kind of I mean, it's not surprise. I mean, they, they'll, they could do that with the main roster tomorrow, too. You know, with people who are, you know, doing, you know, things like that. Um, and, they're, they're, you know, there's there's definitely people on the main roster that, that you could see, um, you know, could be, you know, I guess they're, the idea is to do it before the investors call. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that seems like the idea. So with Bivens, uh, I, I saw Sean Ross Sapp. Had reported that they wanted him to resi- to re- uh, resign in February, but he said no. Yeah, yeah, he turned down a new contract offer, so um, they just decided to get rid of him. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, he was. So I think the feeling was is that he was thinking of leaving, and if that's the case, you know, that's the case. You know, in the case of Dakota Kai, I've been expecting that. You know, when when you know I heard about April fifteenth cuts. I mean, she was definitely on the, in my mind, the list because it's like there's nothing really more that they were going to do with her in NXT. She'd been there for too long. She's, you know, um, mid 30s. And, um, the, you know, they decided, you know, this, you know, they gave her the tryouts on the main roster. Vince said no. And it's kind of like, okay, once Vince sends, once Vince says no, it's kind of like, what are you there for? You know what I yeah. mean? So um, I, I expected her and I, I'm not shocked. I, you know, I would think that she would uh, not be surprised either because, you know, she was there to be called up on the main roster months ago. She was, you know, doing the tryouts and then everybody else got up and and for whatever reason, you know, and I don't, you know, you can all speculate on what Vince sees and doesn't see in people. But whatever it was, you know, he didn't see it in her and it's not her working, obviously. But, you know, I mean, he has ideas of what a star is and and uh, whatever it was. It's, it's his judgment. You know, it's like. You can, you know what his judgment is. I mean, people know that going in. It seems like those two specifically should be snapped up pretty quickly. I, I mean, I don't know what Tony well, well, Khan well, is looking for right now. Well, it's it's not, you know, I mean, I don't know. Again, it's like, um, not, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think uh, Parker Pedro, um, you know, as far as that goes, but Bivens, yeah, I mean, you've got to have a place for him. I mean, he's talented. You know, he's talented. And, he's and, one of my top five favorite promos right now. Yeah, yeah. He's talented. And, and you know, if there's a place for him, sure. You know, but I don't I don't know that there's anyone. I don't know that there's anyone necessary and they have an overloaded roster. So it's kind of like, you know, if he does fine and if he doesn't fine, it's like I don't see either of them as game changers or anything like that. Um, I mean, but, y- you look at uh, Smart Mark. I mean, he's okay but he's no malcolm bivens no he's Mike. not no he's not he's not i mean you could put bivens in that spot but then you would replace the guy that you already have and you could do that you know it's just a you know it's i mean again like if there's a put it this way like if if there's a spot or there's a guy who comes over or there's something like that you know maybe bivens with cesaro or something like that if you want to bring in cesaro and give him a little you know someone who can talk for him or something that would make a good pairing, you know, you, you know, something like that. You could definitely do something like that, you know, and with Dakota, um, you know, I mean, it's like, there's so many women that they have there that they don't do a lot with, but they could bring her in and she's a better wrestler than, than, um, most mm-hmm. of the women they have, but it's not like, it's not like a necessity. It wouldn't be like, I would have, um, uh, 
I think I would would put Athena over her. You know, I mean, in the sense in, in that if, if it was coming, you know, judging one versus the other. But, you know, you can make the argument, you know, either way. I mean, it's not like she would be a bad pick. Um, Parker Boudreaux is an interesting one. But again, um, I'm a little surprised because, you know, he's a big guy. They want big guys, football player. They like football players. But they also have a deal where, you know, they give you kind of like a, a little bit of time and, and they have so many people. And if you don't show improvement in their minds and the coaches' minds or you have a bad attitude or whatever the thing is, um, they figure that they've got an assembly line full of people who can take your spot. And in his case, I mean, I, I was surprised that he was put on television as quickly as he was, because I remember not all that long before he was put on television, you know, there was some, you know, stuff, you know, regarding like, you know, who's a hard worker, who's not a hard worker, you know, who's going to make it, who's not. And, um, you know, uh, you know, um, um, Bron, Bronson Rex Steiner and, um, uh, what's the guy, Jacob Casper, uh, which is, um, Julius Creed, you know, were, were like everyone, they were, those were the ones I was told were like, they're the ones that, uh, they're going to make it and they're going to be big stars. And, you know, when it came to Boudreaux, it was like, it was not favorable at all, you know, as far as like anything. So that's why I was surprised they brought him up with very little training because he wasn't ready for TV. And, um, you know, he wasn't like a rapidly improving guy like those guys were. And um, there were other things, you know, that they weren't so hot on him. So it's kind, it's kind of like with some of these people, you know, you also have this issue. If you're really physically imposing, they rush you onto TV, that if you don't make it right away, they give up on you. I've seen that with so many guys. You know, Chris Masters is, you know, you know, the, the perfect one where they brought him up way, way, way too fast. Um, everyone got this mentality that he wasn't any good. And then eventually he got good, but he got cut because, you know, once Vince gave up on him and he'd been jobbing for so long and then he figured out how to be a good wrestler, it was kind of like, you know, they'd already ruined him. So, um, you know, I mean, he hadn't gotten anywhere close to that, but, uh, you know, there is that thing of bringing up, you know, putting guys on TV because they're big right away. And then people immediately come up with the idea that they suck. And that's a hard label to, you know, erase even when you get better. So, uh, you know, that, but their, their thing is rushing people on TV now and putting them on that show. And we get classic matches like we've been getting, you know, some of lately because of because of that. Persia Parada is someone who they put on their TV show every single week. She was in the one of their main storylines with Indy and Dexter. And uh, I guess they... I guess- uh, I guess the feeling is, is that storyline's over. Duke, Duke, what about Duke? Um, I don't Duke and Indy. I mean, you know, Indy needs a, Indy's greatest storyline. She's not great at wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and uh, Duke. Yeah. What about Duke? Maybe he goes back to playing cards. I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know that, I mean, I, I wasn't a big fan of that storyline. Really. I thought that the, I didn't think it was good at all. Um, you know, and, and Persia wasn't, um, you know, as a wrestler, wasn't much. So, you know, maybe that was the, maybe that was just the decision, you know, as far as whatever, you know, they have, they have so many people, they're signing more people, they're going to be cutting more people. I mean, that's just how it is. I mean, if you don't, if you go there and you're not good enough to where they think that there's, you know, potential for you down the line, um, there's going to be people cut and they're, they're going to be cut quicker than before. You know, that's that's the reality of it. You're not going to, you know, get people. I don't think you're going to have the people like uh, Dakota Kai where you're however many years she was in developmental, six years, five years. I think that it's, you know, I, I do remember when Jim Ross was was doing this um, and, and you know, everyone's different. And I wouldn't call this a hard and fast rule, but I remember when this process started and Jim Ross was the guy who started the process and his mentality was two years. And if you're not good enough for the main roster in two years, we let you go. You know, um, and then with with Paul Lebeck, you know, his mentality was that, you know, we this could be a place where guys can have 10, 15 year careers here, you know, if they don't fit the main roster. Well, that mentality has changed. Mm -hmm. By the way, the NFL draft, the second round is going on right now. And Titus O'Neill just picked for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was wearing a suit. 
that resembled the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniform, if you know what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniform looked like. So that's pretty cool. He's on TV. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Titus, uh, Dustin Poirier, uh, The Miz. I think that there's some others that are going to be um, doing picks that are well known from this world. So Draco Anthony, somebody who has had been on TV of late, was clearly not ready for some of the stuff that they were putting him in. It was act. It was like really kind of. I felt sorry for him in, 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 in a couple situations where it, it just wasn't working out. And then they just, uh, I guess they gave up on him pretty quickly. Yeah. He may have been a victim of that. You know, I mean, like everyone, you know, the, the worst thing to do is rush somebody on TV before they're ready because, um, you know, I mean, TV to me, uh, TV is not a place to learn, but they don't have house shows. So there's nowhere to learn unless you're on TV, you know, so it's a, uh, it's a real weird catch 22. I mean, there's so many guys there and, and he's the perfect example who should be running around doing, you know, 75, hundred matches in a year on house shows before being put on TV. Cause then he's put on TV, not ready. And, and this happens. Yeah. And then referee Blair Baldwin, and then three names that I am not familiar with. Uh, Vish, Vish, Vish Kanya, uh, Mila Milani, and Raylan Devine. Yeah, they, um, I, I have someone who told me a little bit about them, but they were from the Las Vegas tryouts, uh, and they were signed and, uh, you know, um, they didn't think that they were, you know, they hadn't made it TV. And I guess the feeling was, is that, uh, they weren't gonna be ready or whatever, you know? Do you think they have like a list of all the talent and they sort of rank them as to the, and there may be a year, you know, something that has to do, if you've been here for a lot of years, then that kind of maybe pushes you down. But, but some of these names, I was just like, gosh, how does this person, like, how do they determine that this person who, uh, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe maybe, it's, it's in, in in a lot of cases, it's going to be coaching reports. Because obviously, like Vince McMahon doesn't know who these people are. Yeah. So, so some of some of the input's going to be like the, the coaches feel someone doesn't have a good attitude, isn't working hard enough, isn't improving fast enough. You know that word. That's not. That's a kiss of death right now. Unless, you know, for whatever reason, you've got a certain look that they like. In which case, you know, I mean, there have been people who have had had like, um, you know. Um, all through developmental who, you know, the coaches have said aren't ready and, and get brought up because they have the right look, um, you know, going back to the beginning of time. Now, I remember once, I, th- I think I probably told you the story, but they had 21 people in developmental. This was in Ohio Valley and Cornette and Danny, when Cornette and Danny Davis were the coaches and they were ranking them one to 21. And I think it was 18, 19, 20 and 21 were the ones that were called up the bottom <laughs> ones on the list that they thought were the least ready. And I could not tell you, I know that one of them was, um, Oh God, what was the, the, she was in tough enough and she won season two of tough enough. She was the basketball player. Lynn, Lynn is it Linda, Linda miles? Yeah. Linda miles. Absolutely. And one of them was Mark Jindrak who had spent, you know, years in WCW and they just, you know, Cornette and 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 Jindrak obviously had a deal on Twitter, but Cornette didn't think highly of him. And, you know, Jindrak was tall, had a good body and almost got put into evolution and, uh, you know, would have been put in a situation. He still might have failed, but he was going to be put in a situation to be like a major superstar. And then they decided against it. And then he ended up, you know, doing nothing. And now and then he had a great career in, in Mexico after all. So, you know, um, it's it's you just never know. But yeah, like um, I forgot who the other ones were, but it was like one of those similar situations where you just had, uh, you know, um, people who, you know, the coaches don't think are good and they just see an eight by ten. And it's just like, oh, man, we're, you know, whatever. You know, that show is. Uh, oh, by the way, Gable Stevenson is now the next guy making a pick. Um, th- oh, that, really? Yeah. For, for the Vikings. For the Vikings. Oh, wow, 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 cool. Uh, the, the, you know, one of the interesting things about watching this show now, I will say on my podcast with John, we were covering it every week, like pretty in-depthly, and we just gave up. Like last week was the the last draw for us, and so we changed our show a little bit, so we're not even going to focus on NXT anymore. But one of the things that's kind of interesting about watching that show is in the same vein about what you're saying – at you know, are they improving or are they not improving? You can literally see that happen on TV. Like the one that sticks out to me is Zion Quinn. Like he has, he's pretty much the same guy after these last few months of being on TV. 
And you kind of wonder like, okay, what does that mean for him if they don't even trust him in, you know, in some of these situations? Uh, I like there, there's just a few people like that on the on this uh, television show where you, we've watched them now for three months, at least in my eye. I you know who knows what, what they think, but it doesn't seem like they have improved much. But there are others that have improved a, a ton, and 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 it's kind of fun to watch them grow. But yeah, it, it's got to suck to for people to watch you whether or not you have improved or not just right on TV. Yeah. 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 But, you know, some of that also is opportunities and who you're working with. Zion Quinn hasn't exactly worked with anybody any good. Um, you know, you know, uh, Bronson Rex Steiner has constantly worked with people who are good. So they, he, he has a lot more of an opportunity. Um, I still don't understand why they're trying to sabotage him. I know they're not trying, but they are. And it's really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know it's bad. This is a bad gimmick, you know, a bad mix for him, for sure. Um, bad angle. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.